Hi, this is Jen. We are going to work on a rectangular basket today. The rectangular basket's only different from a square basket. Uh, there's more pieces in one direction than another. That's the definition of a rectangle. So here we go. What I like to do to start a basket is I start with two. My longest ones are always horizontal so that the shorter ones don't take up as much of my table. Generally I've marked the centers, but I forgot. So the center is going to be easy to come by. Just gently roll it over, mark the center here with my finger. Do the same here. Center. So we have one, two, three, four. We've woven our first piece. And it's centered. Our pieces are the same length, side to side and we add to either side. And what I care about is what I need to go under. So I went over this one and I went over this one. So I'm going to go under, under, and park it. Your holes should be square. If they're rectangular, your basket, it'll, it, it'll follow the shape of your holes. So here we go. We're going to do this one under. See, we went over, under. So. With a basket, all patterns are over under. So we have over under, over, and we have the opposite in the other direction. So if you see two going the same way, you've made a mistake. Well, this would be the base for a small pack basket for a child or a door um, if the sides were taller. But I wanted to teach you just a rectangular base. They're slightly different than a square. This side and add unders and another under. Now I've woven on a cutting mat and that works nicely. For years I didn't have one so I'm, this is my habit. Ooh. Well, let's see. I've got a lot more over he uh, here than I do here. So I think I'm going to make it a this size. Take those out of there. Let's stretch this out. We will make those holes a little rectangular. We just don't want our holes to be too large. How about this? You like this? That's not bad. Your basket can only be as big as your shortest side. So if you had one that came out to here, one piece that only overlapped that much, that's as tall as that basket can be, and let's just add on, and let's not start doing that right away. Rectangular base. Upset the spokes. them up don't worry I break off about one a year so you can really give them what for and this is the line that your lace your first weave ah I did not mention and I made a mistake we have a good side and a bad side of our material here we have the bad side which I had down the downside is your outside when you're after you start weaving so I flip this over here I want the rough up Rough side, bad side, up, then that. Okay, where are we? Here we go. And this one, usually my fingers can tell. I wasn't paying attention on that one now, was I? Any basket, I look at what do I want to go under? And I start here and I lift them all up. I'm carrying my weaver in my hand, lift these up. And if this basket went off the edge of the table, then I would start to get that far over. Because the further you can get on your straight side, the easier the corner is and the overlap. So I tuck it behind here, because when I come around, this is gonna be a stop woven basket. Go around, come back, stop, pin, stand up. And stand this one up, let that one stay. Pick this one up. Turn your basket, not your body. Stand the one up that you go behind. The rest can stay on the table. Get those next time. Turn the basket so that you're weaving comfortably down here, not up here or trying to weave way out here, out here. So we stand those up and if you have a problem, that's what we have our pins for. Four pins pretty much get anything done. Now we're coming back around and here we started. So we're gonna stop. Overlap on a big basket, at least four. On a small basket, at least two. 
So you go behind, you come over this one, and trim it out here in case we have to do some adjusting. We have the right amount of, we have some give in there, some play. So there we have our first stop row woven row. Always start your stop weaving on different sides because this made a thick place. The end is a little tricky, so I'm actually going to go all the way around to the other side because there's not much room over here, especially a small basket. I lift up what I want to go under, start, go here, and come around. Now we're lifting this one up. This is where we get the ones that are laying on the table. And the next time, don't try to fuss with it and make it stand. Next time, we'll hold it all, push it all down and hold it there. So just keep going. Trust me. Trust the process. It will keep working. Lift up the ones you want to go under. Make nice. I don't want to crease my corners. I never want creases, but I do want some nice little bends. So here we have a round. After the second, possibly the third row, I don't like to weave on the table. It's hard on your arms, your shoulders. I pick it up and either weave it this way or pull it forward and weave it on my lap. Because I'm a lap weaver and lar using large things, uh, making large things, it's easier. So we're going to cut this one only two and stick it back there. Now we could come to here. We can do this one my reed to come to this side of the table. So we can start on an over of this one here. I'll pin it one more time. I usually don't do a lot of pins because they get in the way and then as soon as you can get rid of those pins, get rid of those pins. Just work this side, not creasing but making your basket firm. Here I didn't pin that it popped out but look when I get back here fix it. There. And we're back where we started. We're back. So this is stop weaving. And this is a rectangular base. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to use this opportunity to show you some color and some pattern, how we work that and how we plan it. When you're adding a pattern, often you want to pile one on top of another. So I've decided to show you what some of these patterns look like. You need to plan ahead if you're in a class there are some things you need to know you don't want to get too close to the top it will be covered by the rim i like to go above the halfway point but some people like it a little lower but planning ahead is a good idea so for one you're not taking up class time um, often they haven't planned for that and you're not surprised that you have to do a pattern so let's look at, this is a narrow, this happens to be 7 millimeter, and we're going to go around with a 7 millimeter. And it's just like every other row. Started on a, an opposite side. I do mine at 12, 3, 6, and 9, and then it's back to 12, and then you don't have all those thick places in one spot. So that's where we started the last row, and this is where we go here. Now this pattern is sort of a two different sides of the chain. The chain was a popular design. This is what I had laying around, so this is what we're getting. Probably this is half inch, I'm guessing. Put this here. And the, these work best with stop weaving, but you can use them for rounding, but I'm, and I'll show you how that's going to turn out. It's a little different look. But every side, I'm working that side. I'm not worrying about what's going on over there because I'm not over there, and I'll get to that. So here, yeah, this. And let's take another piece of glue because I have it. Or you could have done two blue down here, which is interesting. I mean, you can, there are, think about, there's as many different ways to do things as there are people to figure it out. But I'm gonna give you a few basic ones to see that there's wide, narrow, wide, narrow, different. Could have used all the same width. Just when I say things like, I don't put all my color at the bottom, I see 
a little kid in my class putting his color down here and I'm thinking, hey, I like that. So whatever you think appeals to you. Before I started, I guess I didn't mention, I pulled all my reeds up. I packed my basket so that these would be tight and they've shifted a little bit, that's gonna happen. But it'll keep this from running onto your color. So before you add your color, think about that. Now what's gonna make this stand out is that when we put, and this is a thing you can try in class, if you try and put your clear, your next natural row on top and see if you like the design. Keep in mind that classes are set for, this is upside down, um, the rough side was up, are set for a certain length of time. And so if you spend a lot of time fussing with design, you're not gonna get your basket done. Um, and sometimes there's another class behind it or the people are ready to go home. So just keep that in mind. There are some things you can do after and I'll show you some of those. Now, this is why I'm telling you not to get too close up here because your rims gonna cover up some things and you have to have some room at least the width of these top two pieces to bend. So you don't want to get your color up in there. You, you want to plan that to be a little lower. Here you go. And there we have it. I don't think we dare. We'll pull this up. I pull harder in the center, less to the side, and pretty much just make sure those are flat so that my basket will sit on four corners even if it's a hanging basket, I like that center to be a bit higher here so it will stand. You put it down, hopefully it won't rock. If it rocks, give it another little tug. Squeeze and a tug. We're gonna try this as a rounded basket. Rounded meaning round and round and round instead of stop woven. And we'll show you what happens with the pattern that way. So we have this, I'm going to fold it. This is how I always find my centers. I kind of gently crease it. There we go. There. And this one, I weave them all the same. Horizontal, long, or the long ones, vertical, the short ones. If I have a piece that's curved, I point it to the outside. I kind of save it for later as a rule. And I'm looking for my good side, bad side. My thumb's doing that while you're not looking. What goes, what I'm gonna go under. See, now that won't bang into anything when I'm actually weaving. So let's go over to this side and add some. I'm trying to show you whether I have hairy side or smooth side. So I've determined this is hairy and hairy goes up. I'll put hairy up there, under this out just a little bit a big, little bit bigger basket I really like my center one which I have to cut to be an under but I didn't think that way so I'm gonna have to make this work again upsetting the spokes bending them really firmly because our basket that first row or two is going to follow this line and this line is wobbly if you don't have a good crease you're not going to have success now, with randing, I have to cut one, and I usually do the center. I like it if it's an under, but it's not, so we work with what we have, under meaning like this one. But I also want it in the center because I want it in the end. I call this the back. Once I've got a split in it, I call it the back. In order to, to start this basket off nicely, we're not going to put a blunt end, I want to taper. And my taper is the size of the basket. It's gradual, whether if it's a small basket, it's not as long. If it's a big basket, it'd be more gradual. Throw this out. And I'm gonna lift up what I wanna go behind. Under, under, and here we are. And the weaving is all the same, except when you come back to that split piece. So here we are, round, round, round. stand those pieces up in the corner. This one split and the next row will hold it down. So I'm just gonna work it gently right there. Looks like somebody stepped on that. Probably me. 
Now, when you come back here, the reason we split is in order to keep going. The last one we stopped because it was an even number. By splitting this one, it changes the weave. So I'm able to take these and treat them like two separate ones, push them apart, and keep weaving. So there's no more overlap and stop and scissors. It, this is a much faster way to weave a basket. And if you're not adding color, this is perfect. Except that you have that split. And some, it bothers some people. I'm quite used to it. We're going to put three rows on this one, just like we did the last one. Move this over here. I got a little loosey, loosey goosey, so I'm going to just run around and tighten it up and weave it. Now to add the color. What I could find for color was narrower, so I might as well show you how to do this while we're at it. I do all of my adding and subtracting of everything, all changes happen at the split because I figure it's already the odd, odd man out. So this is here. Let's cut this back. Taper it just a bit. and we're gonna add this is the way you add any material while you're at it you needed to add more color you wouldn't need to taper and generally you don't taper again unless you pick a smaller color your color is narrower so put this in here and I don't like to do things at the split but yeah I mean the overlap the split but it's gonna happen this time I'm sorry Okay, get the good side up and you start weaving. Good thing weaving is all the same. Nothing different about the weaving. And as far as color, be a little conscious of the fact that color is twice as much as natural read and your class was probably planned on natural read. So use some color, but not a whole pound of it would be appreciated. Or even if you're buying it. Now here's the thing with randing. And this is the thing that upsets some people. When you come back around, you're a row higher. You always were all the way along here. So if you want your rows to be perfect, you need to go back to stop weaving. For randing, this is gonna happen every time. It, it just, there's no other thing that can happen. This row is always gonna be higher. And so that's why I put it on the place I call the back. And again, this is gonna come out one row higher. There's nothing, there's no way to change that. Um, so embrace it. I'm going to cut this one off and we can do this gives you a nice two-piece half of a chain. And then I don't know if I mentioned it so I'm going to mention it again. Before you put your color on if you don't want it to bleed onto these spokes or you always before you put your color on tighten those up. So I want to go back and have everything at the split right there and I'm going to do this is one one pattern it's kind of popular, common, I should say, I don't say popular, but it's common. If I don't want a whole chunk of color, I want to emphasize, get the most room out of it. I might do four rows of this natural, but not on this basket, it's too small. And these need to be pulled up there. And should this run right there, you've got a little bit of pink, a Q-tip with bleach and touch it up here and let the capillary action take care of it. So that we have this is back around to where we started. And now I'm gonna put another, see that? Another row of red, just for fun. Because I, my grandson says, because I can. And the front, this is, if this is the front of your basket, you never know that you have this going on in the back. If it's a door basket or something hanging on a wall, nobody's ever gonna see it, so we let it go. I'm gonna try to get two times around, but I know I didn't soak enough. Now you could have had two colors, one on this. Um, I didn't happen to have two colors the same size, so I'm going to this, that, and we're gonna end it. So that is randing. 
this is the pattern I, I came up with and this is what your back is going to look like. So keep in mind, before you make your basket, whether you're interested in randing or stock weaving. Now, I wouldn't, I don't want anything up in my rim, remember? And this is wider, so I'm going to taper this and make it like we did here to bring it down a, row, a little bit. Get started. Bad side is in. Again, no color near your rim. And this natural top and above and below really sets the design off. If you bring it up too far, you lose it um, in the rim. So let's not do that. And I said I would show you what happens if you get too large, a large row at the top and you forgot to put your little one on. So let's show you while, you work, while we're here. Now, we started with a taper, so we have a half a piece here, we want a half a piece here. We always do, this will make the top level. Can't help in here, but we can make this top level. There we go. Nice gradual taper. Now we have a little, about a half and about a half. Tuck that end. Now, I didn't plan well enough to get a lot to bend over the top, so I'm going to squeak and cheat and do whatever. Get out the reed stretchers, what we call it. Pull these up and bend them over the top. Now, the reason is I would normally have a narrow one there. No matter what, I have a narrow one under my rim. But occasionally, I forget as well as others. Oops, that one doesn't want to bend. I'm going to use, just for sake of demonstration, I am going to use a flat. And you could use a flat, there's no reason not to use a flat rim. And so I consider this the front of my basket, it's the prettier side. I'm going to use the flat and overlap my rim here. And I'm looking for my rim to cover that top row. And if I had this one, it would work, but I don't. So we can show you what to do if you don't. You're going to lay on your rim just as if you did. And that will mean setting it up a little bit from the up, up, a little higher. You're going to put the rim, pull it really tight. You want it close to that edge. You want it close. Because if you get it this way and you go to lace your rim on, you got a gap and it's not going to, you're not going to be able to lace it tight no matter what. Always pull the rim tight, tight, tight. Come around, overlap at least a couple of inches. Otherwise, these would point, they become, the rim would become egg shaped. I have put a taper on this with a knife. Uh, this is a flat oval, flat on this side, oval on this side. I like it for a rim that gives it a nice sturdy. And we start this one on the opposite side, being the back. Now the round reed sits on the top just to finish that edge. So you're not looking at the edge here. So we've got that nice little piece of round reed. And it's just a trim piece. Filler, a lot of people call it. I think it makes a nice trim. definitely needs the filler. You know, see, I mine had let go, so when I put the pin on, it pulled it in. There we go, and I want it setting up a bit. Okay, we're coming back around. There's no room for overlap between the rims, so we're going to cut these to match. may have to finesse that in a minute. I want to taper, I want, this is, I've tapered off the top. I'm going to taper the underside of this. It's called a scarfing scarf joint or something like that. I call it tapering. I'm going to set this one up so you can see the difference in the rims. This one is only going to, I'm using flat reed. Flat reed doesn't give you as nice stiff a rim, but it works. Actually, if I have really stiff piece of material, I hang on to it and use it for the inside rims on a lot of things that I just don't want to be terribly chunky. I want it like for a smooth look, like on a bread basket or something, sitting on a table or like that. 
Okay, I have a piece of round reed. And now this is raised up, making room for this, making room for the filler. And it covers thusly. Pins. Pins are your friend. This is a flat oval, but it's fine. It's going to do a nice job lacing. Now I start my lacing where I've done my overlap. And the reason I do that, if I come back and I had a little slack, it can slide right under. See that? So I want to go in here and go under, under something. And it's not going to go anywhere. And I know that less than about two times around here will be enough. And I don't want to drag, oh my goodness, enough to do another whole basket through. So I go to about two, two and a quarter times around. This is where the difference comes in. I'm going right between that little row under here and this top row. And put it through and I park the end over there so I can find the top. And pull this way, but not only do I pull this way, is I push this way. Put it all together. And it's a push and pull game. doesn't twist. I don't like chasing twists. See, I do have a gap here, and I'm going to push that probably all the way around because that's the only way I'm going to work it out. If you see here, see I've got a big span, and that's another thing that these overlaps are good for. I'm going to push this around to the back one little thing at a time, and this is going to allow me that pin off. Now this overlap absorbed the problem. There's room for it to just correct itself. My goal here wasn't rimming. It was to show you patterns in a rectangular base, but we might as well show you some other things that can go wrong. Because if something can go wrong, it might. And you need to be prepared. And there's a fix for everything. Sometimes the fixes ignore it. Because honestly, nobody will see. There are mistakes in here, but you don't see them. And if I don't point them out, you'll never know. Perfection takes about 100% longer. That's all I'm doing, is going all the way around this basket. This is rippling a little bit at the top because I used a very wide piece for the rim. And so there's some extra in there, but I'm working with what I had on hand here. Pull this through um, to end. Pull that open. I'm making an opening right here. I'm going to push this through, pull down tight after I pull it too low and snip it. And there we have a rim. Now shape it while it's all wet. Because later it's not going to want to shape. Do any trimming you need. And this is a stop woven file basket, say, little recipes. So let's go to our randit basket and look at how this is different. And remember, this is the one we made a mistake. We didn't use a skinny one under the top row, but we're going to pretend we did by doing this. We're going to make our skinny row. So I'm going to go in here and make an opening to put this. And again, two times around, I have plenty. See, I had stuff left over the last time, and I still have left over. That's why I measure around two times and cut it off. So I made my opening, just going to poke this in here, and I've started on the back with an overlap, like I did on the other side. Whoops, pulled it right out, didn't I? There we are. And in the opening I made, and sometimes your lacer is strong enough, stiff enough to make the opening on its own. I'm 
pushing that together. Be careful you don't lace off the top. That's a thing that can happen too. We lace it along and there's no basket under it. Pulling tight all the time. Looking inside to make sure you've got everything lined up. And on randing, going round and round, another thing happens. When you get back to where you started, if you remember correctly, we tapered under that rim. So we already needed, to, no matter if we use the right size, we still would have had to make an opening under the rim because you have a quarter of a piece and another piece. So you always, this is what I do under all my tapered rims, my rounded rims, is make an opening right under the rim so I can get, so that my rimming is flush and I'm not dropping down too far too. Now this is where if I'd had a problem, I could slide that right under. I didn't have one this time, which is unusual. Right, see where we had tapered did leave us a couple of little openings because it's thinner under there. Again, go inside. Use your tool. Go inside. Poke it down. Take the tool out. Now I'm gonna shape. This is a little, this is more important to shape because this stuff is really stiff. So we've solved the problem and the mistake of this that is the back. And this one is the same on both sides. Now, as I had mentioned, you can do little things like put a piece through here. You could add a decorative color, but do all of this stuff later after your class. You can put something in here. Dress it up, have fun with it. No color near the top. And remember, you had to bend things over. So I'd say three inches from the top, you don't want any color. Lay out your pattern, think about your pattern ahead of time. You can try it on a piece of paper. You can, in class, put on a row or two. See, eh, I don't like that, and do something different. But there is making a pattern and a rectangular basket. So thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like us and uh, make a comment, subscribe, and happy weaving. Have a great day.